I have to say congratulations to you both for making such an entertaining film very uh, heartbreaking very um, realistic authentic um, and it's, it's just so amazing to see how you know one moment in time can change so many lives and I thought you did such a great job playing this character and I know that you're also one of the executive producer as well but I have to ask you Mr. Kagan I mean because the story is so realistic and so authentic um, was it one of the main priorities for you is to keep it real? As real as I could, um, but you know, I, I was relying on the talent of such a skilled artist sitting next to me that I knew that he would commit totally to creating the reality of what this would be like. And both of us have gone through the experience of meeting people and being with people who've had this kind of experience so that we have references and I, one of the goals was for you, the viewer, to be able to actually experience on a personal level what it would be like if this happened to you. So stylistically, we chose to, once the character that Noah plays, Mark, once he gets shot, the film changes points of view so that actually we really are looking at him and seeing what he sees. So it's not the kind of objective filmmaking. It becomes very personal because I wanted the audience to become the character that Noah is portraying so that we all go through this as, as if it had happened to us and what would it be like. And you're right. I mean, as I was watching this film, I could totally relate to his emotional swings. Can you talk about the preparation, how you prepare for this role? And were you able to speak to the victims of gun violence prior to shoot? to the shooting? I didn't speak to anybody directly, but there are lots and lots of testimonials and interviews with people who have been the victims of gun violence, which are easily available for watching. Uh, not only their descriptions about the physical sensations of being shot and the progression of their injury, but also the more traumatic, longer lasting emotional effects of having been the victim of violence which is really what the second half of the movie focuses on. Um, that degree of realism that you mentioned, I think, was obtained through the fact that we shot the movie almost in continuity. We shot almost start to finish in order, which is very rare. Um, the coffee shop that we're in is a coffee shop. The street I get shot on is a street. <laughs> the ambulance that picks me up is an ambulance. It wow. took me to an actual hospital. <laughs> Uh, I'm in an actual chair, you know. What about the doctors in the ER? They, we did have a couple real people oh. in there to make sure that the actors were doing everything accurately. And, you know, the difference between doing this film and the, and the years that I spent on a medical drama was that on a medical TV show that has 41 minutes to tell the story, you compress the amount of time it takes to do all the procedures. So, you know, something that might take three and a half, four minutes, you do in 22 seconds because that's what you need to do. This film allowed the breathing room to allow that procedure to take four and a half minutes, which made the attention of watching it, the anxiety of the viewer realizing how long this is and how uncomfortable this person is and how painful that must be. It really, I, I find it difficult to watch the movie because it is so uncomfortable, the way it sits in those silences for so long. That I think is uh, probably what you, what you mean by feeling very realistic is that movies have a tendency to put music or to cut it, the scene up in a way that it, uh, lends itself to more of an artificial viewing experience, whereas this was far more presentational as if you're just bearing witness to it. You know, and you, when you mentioned that particular scene, I thought was it was hard for me too to watch when the doctor, the nurses tried to put the needles in your character, Mark. I'm like, really, does this really happen? in hospital where they talking over each other constantly, the nurses might actually put in the wrong place and you can feel his pain, but he's not trying to say anything because his worries, I think more for about his relationship with his wife, are they gonna work, how are they gonna make it? And I find like these doctors, I didn't know that they do chit chat, they do yap every now and then, they're not, they're serious, but somehow they have their own sense of humor. That's right, and it's, it's kind of a gallows humor and it turns out um, we spent time there with the real people who do this work, that's there. And that's their survival technique in many ways because it's so intense. You know, here comes somebody you don't know who's, who's who may be in lots of the playing the pain and expressing it. And yes, you do all the things you can do. And you may be very, very empathetic or at least compassionate toward them. But, but, 
But after this happens once, twice, 10, 15, 30 times, lots of times, like the doctor says in the movie that does, Anna Berkeley says, you're not my first gunshot, but, you know, they're not. And so it becomes, this is what you do. And sometimes the patient dies and sometimes they don't. And in order to survive, you know, you talk about other things like, boy, was that a, there's a great restaurant down in, in Orange County that makes these fabulous crap. <laughs> you know, you're dealing with, you know, you're dealing with, you know, uh, don't, you're going to be okay, kid. Don't worry about it. And, and you should take, uh, they, they have the soft best. shell crab and, and the dewy um, pork and all, they're wonderful. medication for this guy? I mean, that's literally what's, <laughs> so, what the so what went through his mind? What went through Mark's mind while he was lying? Helpless. As we saw his wife standing there, he talked about his favorite ice cream. She's aware of what's going on, but what actually went through his mind at that time? I, well, I, I tried to mark it out in stages, and I think it's it's a degree to the ability to what you allow yourself to take in. You know, at first it's complete denial. I'm okay. Just get me to my feet, and I'll be fine. And then confusion. Why am I having a difficult time getting my deep breath? Why am I not being able to feel? my hands the right way and then panic you know uh, the realization that this is more serious than maybe you're able to control and then anger you know why did this happen to me why now Ooh, you know uh, and then through all that a, a, a bizarre sense of acceptance like if I'm gonna have to survive this then I can't waste energy asking those questions I need to put all my focus and energy on healing and getting through this and staying alive uh, and then the aftermath of how do I rebuild my life? How do I rebuild my relationships? How do I negotiate as something as simple as getting a glass of water from the refrigerator? Yeah. You know, when it involves steps and heights that I can't easily access. So, uh, what was I thinking? I was thinking all those things, uh, or trying not to think about all those things, and having those things only occur to the character at the moment in the script where. He needed to have that awareness to get him to the next stage of the development. There were times when I was looking at him and thinking, this is so real, I'm getting really uncomfortable now. This is no longer you know, an actor portraying something. This is no longer me being the director, encouraging. There were this times like, where this is happening. he would and call I'm cut and he wouldn't want to do a second take because he felt like he was being masochistic or sadistic to me. Um, like because that. most of it, the entire, <laughs> most almost of it, all the stuff where in the hospital. Anything, or anytime I really, you know, there were a lot of times where I, the way that you show pain, for example, on film, it's been done so many hundreds of thousands of different ways. And most of the time in a movie, a character expresses pain but doesn't want anybody else to know how much it really hurts him. He wants to sh put on a brave face. Yeah. Uh, until it's overwhelming and then to the best of their ability they try not to be embarrassing they try not to humiliate themselves that even in a moment of utter just loss you still have a sense of decorum and not wanting to cause a fuss right but I wanted this to look like it really hurt so I so what were you thinking when you I have to <laughs> that, that I, I, don't, don't want, I want anybody that that's going to shoot somebody from the time they see this movie forward should know that they're going to hurt somebody this much and anybody who's going to get shot uh, from this movie forward is going to know that it's going to hurt more than they can imagine and so that was my goal it wasn't my goal to make him so uncomfortable <laughs> that he felt like he had to be nice to me and not give me an added direction or a second take um, I, I was I was in for a penny, in for a pound. Amazing. And I have to say, Noah, you and Sharon Lille have such great chemistry in, in this film. And I particularly like the scene in the operating room where the truth finally comes out between you and your wife. Um, why does it take a near-death experience for a husband and wife to actually talk and, and be know, honest with each good. other? You know, and, uh, there are a lot of politics about gun ownership and gun safety that this movie addresses, but there's another aspect that is equally as thought-provoking, which is this preoccupation we have with schedule and time and agenda and, and our own problems, that when an incident like this happens, all of that completely dissipates and goes away. So how important could it really have been? And so your question, why did it have to take all of that to get to a moment of honesty for these two people, I thought was one of the more beautiful messages of the movie. That if there's a way to shortcut to that, have the human experience bypass all that, or at least allow us to have a perspective that keeps all that stuff in ratio, proper ratio with the things that are important in life, um, then this movie is really worthwhile.
Yeah. This film is such a great message because you touch us on so many different, I mean, important issues, bullying, gun violence, poverty, health care. So now what's next for you? What are you planning to do next? I'm going to make a, a second version of it. He's, <laughs> he, he's going to get shot again. <laughs> 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 Well, we are looking forward to see your next film, and great job, Noah. Thank you so much for talking to us. We're so honored to talk to you both. Well, well, thank you, thank you, and have a have a great year.